I pick Johnny. Okay, I pick Susie. Okay, I pick Matthew. You remember what it was like in elementary school, and you're picking sides for that big kickball game for recess. You know, you're, you're in math class or in English class or whatever the combined class is, and you're so excited to get out there because you know that kickball is out there just waiting, and it's a beautiful sunny day. And what do they do? You pick sides. You have this side go over here, and you have this side over here. And then they go at it and kickball, and they go at it and at it and scoring points all the way up until the bell rings, and it's time to go back inside. And whoever had the most points was your winner. And God forbid there was a tie, because, oh, man, the arguments that would ensue after the that tie, it would just be incredible having to deal with all the verbals that were going on in elementary school. So fast forward a little later, you're you're in middle school, high school, you join the volleyball team, the basketball team, the football team. What do they do? You're on two different sides. It's your school against another school. And you go at it. Sometimes you have your arch rivals. You know, that, that school down the road that you play every single year and in the tournaments. And, and you just go at it like crazy and blood is shed. And you just go head to head, toe to toe. And that's what you do. That's how we were raised. Uh, siblings. You know, sometimes you have the sibling rivalries. Uh, you know, one wants more than the other one does and that sibling vies for position in the family and for dominance over the other sibling and sometimes the arguments ensue and and sometimes they try to get the other siblings on their side right and that what you do sometimes you try to you recruit the other brothers and sisters to join your side against that other brother and sister when you're you know going and, and trying to figure out stuff at home and in in all the socialism that that the the, the family unit and it's not always uh, roses is it sometimes it's it's a little bit of that that fighting and and that's what we did that's how we were raised that's it's it's in our genes it's in our genetics and you look all throughout history you got one country versus another country you got one person versus another person and spill that into our election you have one man over another man buying for, to be president you have the republicans versus the democrats and i know there's some in-betweens and some other things but Ultimately, it's split, right? And if you're watching the polls, I don't know how much faith you have in the polls after we saw what happened in 2016. We'll see. We'll see if maybe they're closer this, this time around. But if you are paying attention, you do see that it's neck and neck. It's, it's pretty close. It's pretty tight. Um, <clears throat> I kind of have a, a, a theory or a thought of who I think might win or not. But <clears throat> regardless of who wins... Will chaos be ushered in after the election or during the election? In all honesty, I believe a lot of chaos is already existing uh, throughout a lot of our major cities. Even if the news hasn't been reporting it, there's chaos already existing. There's already division that exists in our country. Remember, one side versus the other. It's just a genetic. It's, it's, it's what we do. I mean, look back at it in the Civil War time. It was half our country against the other half, per se, and it was just going at it. So... If you, if you pay attention, you know there's just always a division. There's always something going on. Well, what can eliminate a division or two different sides? Well, if you have a con, common enemy, a common enemy will bring everybody together and to go after that common enemy. Uh, we've seen that happen many times throughout history. Look at our world wars. Um, you know, Look at the different events and terrorism that took place in America at 9-11, and it brought our country together uh, for a time. Uh, then we go right back to picking sides again, right? Uh, so unfortunately, that's what, that's what we do. And <clears throat> regardless of who's voted in, somehow we need to come together. Uh, somehow we need to find a way to push through some of this. Now, uh, looking after the election, I know there's a lot of other scenarios that are in play right now. Uh, the food shortage is one topic that you hear a lot about that's in play. Now, this past weekend... Uh, we did some grocery shopping here at House of Prep. Uh, we got our house in order. We got all the groceries and uh, some more perishables and things that we needed. And you know what? Uh, our grocery stores that I'm here in my area in Tennessee, they were well stocked. Uh, I was impressed. They uh, did a very good job on items uh, that they could. Now, you know, the typical stuff that we've just been kind of short all year long, obviously those were still short. And those were off the shelves. Some of those shelves were empty. That's to be expected. I already expected that. But uh, there's food to be had. There's food to be purchased. Uh, which leads me to a side note. If this is your first time prepping, 
and maybe you've watched this video and you're still thinking, man, you know, should I, is it too late to start prepping? No, it's never too late. Um, could you have maybe started it a little earlier? Uh, yes, <laughs> you could have, but it's not too late. Um, today is the best day to start. If you haven't started already, start today and go ahead and start looking at some of my other videos. Uh, there's plenty of good uh, other channels out there, prepper channels, lots of just valuable information. All you have to do is look. And if you go through um, on my playlist, the food prep items, you'll there's some different videos in there that give you some ideas and some tips. My pantry's in there. Um, so obviously take a look at that. And if this is your first time really trying to develop a plan, that's good. I'm glad that you are now looking and that you are thinking outside the box of what to do for the what ifs, the scenarios that we don't know. <clears throat> my, my honest personal opinion, I think the food shortage, you know, it's possible that we could still hit something. It's, it's, it's very possible depending on maybe transportation and trucking and different things. It's very possible that we do have some issues with food shortage. But as for what I'm seeing in my area, I don't know about your area, but in my area, I'm seeing that they are stocking and that they are doing a good job. And I believe, at least again in my area, I believe that uh, people have kind of woke up to the idea of being better prepared. So there's not that mad rush to the store right now of as many people, because I think a lot of people have already kind of got it. I think they're kind of prepping ahead a little bit and, and, and being prepared a little bit more. And that's a good thing. Um, and as a prepper and, and someone who's trying to encourage other people, that's a good sign. And for other people that are preppers that are on here, you should be encouraged by that. That helps you. And then also that, that lets you know that other people are being better prepared. And that puts a less of a target on your back when something hits the van and, and everyone's out trying to you know, look for food and, and maybe targeting other people. And that's good to know that other people are now starting to be better prepared. And that's a good sign. That's, that's something that we strive for. That's something that uh, as prepper channels, that's something that we try to encourage other people to do. So that's a good thing. <clears throat> now, outside of uh, the food, obviously, we're also concerned with uh, riots. So will the election usher in riots? I think a lot of that will depend on which way the election goes. Regardless, we're still dealing with it. We're still dealing with looters and rioters. I believe that, yes, the election itself will definitely continue that and, and usher in maybe even greater uh, civil unrest and greater looting and greater riots and things um, against our police officers. And I think that that still will continue. And I think that the potential for that to escalate is absolutely 100% there. I think that, yes, that's something you need to consider. Um, and if you live in one of those hot zones and you've already been experiencing some things, that, yes, you do need to be prepared for that. You need to understand that that is a reality right now. That's something that you have to just plan and, and get your family ready for that. And um, I think outside of, of that is the economy. So I believe... The, the economy has the potential to spark off more than the previous two things I've just discussed. After the election, depending on who wins, I believe that the housing market has gone up and up and up and up and up for so much time now that at some point it's going to hit a ceiling and the potential for it to pop. Uh, I've seen that happen. I lived in Florida several years ago when we hit, hit that bubble, the bubble burst, and I've watched it. I felt it. I lived it and saw that the housing market was crashing and the values plummeted and the banks were in trouble and, and people's loans and making payments were in trouble. I believe that the economy and then people losing their jobs and people still out of work um, and with a lot of these cities that we've talked about that are in trouble with rioting and looting and, and a lot of places that are still shut down, I believe that we still have not reached the full chain reaction of the effects of all that that have taken place. Uh, I believe, depending on who wins the presidency, um, you can see the stock market begin to go down. As you've kind of already seen it kind of fluctuating, kind of nervous, a lot of nervous investors out there. 
Um, I believe that because of a lot of the debt that we've accumulated, I think that some of that's going to catch up to us and dealings with other countries and uh, some watching on the news, different countries starting to experience their own problems and how will that affect the American economy. Uh, I believe that's something we need to watch very carefully. Um, yes, we do have food issues we want to watch. I believe that, yes, the riots and the looting and uh, civil unrest, that yes, you need to watch that. But make sure you get your ducks in a row, get your house in order when it comes to your finances and your money. Uh, make sure you do have um, a, a stash stashed away somewhere uh, around your home or at a location that you know is safe and secure and keep some cash on hand. Um, it would be horrible if you wake up one day and find out that the bank said to shut their doors uh, in fear of a run on money uh, because of the economy crashing or something going on. So before the election takes place, go ahead, get you some extra cash out, run by the ATM in machine. It's not going to hurt you to have a little cash put up and have some emergency funds. Go ahead, run to the grocery store. Go ahead and stock up on those perishables. Get the extra milk and the breads and uh, maybe some of the, the lettuce and salads and things that are healthy and 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 go ahead and get some of that. Make sure your refrigerator has everything it needs. Uh, it's better just to stay home for a couple days at that point as far as grocery shopping goes. If you can go ahead and get it out of the way, it makes sense. Just get it out of the way and try to create a safe zone for yourself and your family. <clears throat> the less interaction you have with other people, the better. Um, as far as the election goes too, if you're going to the polls, uh, I work at a place that happens to be a delegated uh, voting place for, for people to go vote. So I'm considering maybe taping some of that and putting it here on my channel uh, as I'll be there all day tomorrow and I'll get to see people coming and going, Democrats, Republicans. Um, I don't believe in my specific city, I'm in a smaller town, um, I don't believe that there would be physical problems and things, but I do know that in some areas that could be an issue, that could be a problem. Um, so I will be keeping an eye on that as well. So if you are going out, keep your head on a swivel, you know, try to avoid creating conflict with other people. Sometimes it's easy to spout off at the mouth. Sometimes we're impatient. Sometimes uh, we're frustrated. We're angry. We're dealing with people that are in that same mindset. Frustration can abound, you know, a lot of uneasiness, a lot of unrest. Uh, remember, it's this team against this team sometimes, and, you know, talking football with other people, and sometimes they can get heated over a silly sport. Well, like they say, sometimes you can talk about everything in life, but don't talk about what? Religion or politics, okay? So it might be best to just not even discuss with anybody who might be on the other side of your fence don't even have a conversation with them these next couple of days. Go do your business. Take care of yourself. And sometimes the best thing to do is just be quiet. Just kind of stay low key. Stay neutral. Uh, just kind of watch. See what's going on around you. And just try to stay out of any potential problems that might arise. Look, I just want your safety. I just want everyone that's watching this. and that If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, for my subscribers that are there. I'm praying for each one of you. I hope for safety. I hope that this week goes smooth. Uh, we could run into a problem that the vote's not decided this week. It might get stretched out for a few weeks. Uh, so just be prepared for that. And I'm planning on being home uh, during the election after I get off work. And all my errands, I'm, I'm making sure I'm running all my errands today. Uh, making sure everything's stocked up to the best of my ability. And, you know, go ahead and get you some popcorn, get you some snacks, get you some, some, your favorite candy or your ice cream and, you know, kick back and relax. Uh, take a little time out tomorrow and, and during the election time. And it's okay to just sit back and watch and just observe and just knowing and resting assured that you have prepared and that you have done the best that you can do. So you all take care. Hope you all are doing well. And I'll talk to you all later. Bye.